Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the MSI Meg X299 creation. This is a video to talk through installation problems and things to avoid when installing and setting up this motherboard. Most importantly, in terms of the BIOS and Windows installation, the motherboard itself is actually really easy to install and fit in your case, as any, any motherboard is, just requires a few screws. Um, but there are a number of facets to it which make it a bit tricky in certain places. I thought I'd share my experiences with you to talk about it. The highlights of this motherboard include multiple M2 slots, eight DIMM slots for DDR4 RAM, and a high-end CPU socket that allows you to run the latest extreme CPUs from Intel or AMD, depending on which version of the board you bought. This is the X299, which is the Intel chipset. Note on the back, there is a BIOS flashback and CMOS flash button. These are useful because that allows you to reset the BIOS. There is also a dual BIOS system on this motherboard where there is a switch located near the bottom of the motherboard that allows you to switch between one or the other BIOS settings. This is great if you're having problems with one BIOS, you can switch into the other to deal with it. Now into the BIOS itself, this is the BIOS as you should see it if it's properly presented. Now I had a problem with the BIOS straight away whereby it would only show the top quarter of the screen. I also had issues with overlaying the menu system, which was really weird. Turns out it's actually down to the resolution of my monitor because I was using an ultra-wide monitor on it. Now, the other problem I've had is to do with the BIOS mode. So now in default settings, the MSI X299 Creation motherboard will set to legacy and UEFI mode. Now when you're installing Windows you obviously need to set the boot option to USB key, boot into your Windows creation tool and install Windows. In doing that the first problem I hit was I encountered an issue with the computer then blue screening and that is caused by a missing driver. Now I've got a another video on how to fix that and I'll add a link in the description. But the other problems with the default settings on the motherboard in the BIOS is that Windows 8.1 slash 10, which is the important thing, WHQL support is disabled by default. It's also set to BIOS mode and legacy. As you can see here, the boot mode selected as standard is legacy plus UEFI. Now this leads to problems because it means that MSI's fast boot technology doesn't work properly and you don't get the fastest speeds. It also means when you're in Windows, sometimes some software and even hardware doesn't operate properly. So for example, perfect example of this is the MSI Dragon software. This software allows you to download and install other bits of software, including BIOS actually, BIOS updates. And um, I found that was crashing to desktop without any warning. So it's important to make sure that before you install Windows, you go into the BIOS and enable the WHQL support. You can then also enable MSI Fastboot once you've set that up. It is also worth noting that MSI Fastboot is the fastest way to boot your system. However, when you activate it, you also disable USB connections and they won't be detected when booting. That can present problems in other ways because that means you will struggle to enter your BIOS after this is set up because you need to obviously press delete to enter the BIOS. However, there is a solution. When in Windows, if you press the shift key on your keyboard and then click to restart, you can then enter another menu system which allows you to fix this issue. You'll see what you need to do here is click on Troubleshoot, reset its PC, you'll see Advanced Options. Click on Advanced Options, then click on UEFI Firmware Settings. That will then restart your PC and put you back into the BIOS. So the points of note really here are the ensuring that you have your BIOS set to UEFI before you install Windows, not UEFI and Legacy because you won't get the fastest speeds and it also can cause other problems. Also, to make sure that WHQL is enabled for Windows 10, otherwise you're going to hit problems. Now, another point of note, here I'm just using a WD Black as a demonstration, but the there are three M2 slots on the motherboard. Only the top two 
support Intel Optane Memory Accelerator modules. So if you have an accelerator module you want to install, you need to make sure you install it in one of those top two, otherwise it won't be recognized. I failed to read the motherboard manual properly and the small print on that and missed this key point. So I was wondering why the Optane Memory Accelerator wasn't working when it was installed in the accompanying M2 adapter that comes with this motherboard. So that's a frustration. A minor one. Another point of note, actually, small print, is that the motherboard clearly states that you shouldn't use SATA ports 1 and 2 if you're using the M1 and M2 slots on the motherboard as well. Another thing I'd highly recommend is making sure that all your drives are wiped before you install them. I made an awful mistake of taking a Windows boot drive from another machine and putting it in this one with full wiping it, and it booted from that, which caused me loads of other issues. Hope you found this use video useful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or if you've had any nagging issues with this. The easiest way to do it is a fresh install. There are other solutions. Some of them I played around with and ended up wiping the drive, which is not ideal. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed it, found it useful, interesting or humorous or all of the above. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and also drop me a comment and let me know what you liked. And if you really didn't like it, please let me know the reasons why as well, with constructive feedback that I can use to improve my future videos. Any feedback is always appreciated. And if you have the time, please consider subscribing to my channel so you get to see more awesome content from me in future. I'm always looking to grow my follower base and also to keep carrying on producing interesting content on a variety of gaming peripherals, game videos, tips, tricks, unboxings, and all sorts of other things. Let me know what you like from my channel and if there's anything you'd like to see more of. Thanks very much for your time. Have a great life.